Australia, a country of endless beauty. From the shimmering coast to the red center, from tropical islands to untouched wilderness, the great coral reefs to the great outdoors, Australians have always had a love for this land and exploring its countless wonders. We are, however, not the only inhabitants. Australia is home to over a million species of animal and plant life, many of which are found nowhere else on Earth. Among them are some of the most venomous snakes, spiders and sea creatures in the world. Between 1,000 to 3,000 people are affected by snake bite each year in Australia, with some of these cases being fatal. While the majority of snakes are found in rural areas, they can also appear in suburban Australia, along with the redback and the funnel-web spiders. Even at some of Australia's beaches, the risk of envenomation can come from the sudden sting of a box jellyfish or stonefish. As Australia's population reaches over 25 million, it is important that we understand these potential risks in our natural environment and how to respond if bitten or stung. So I grew up in Western Australia and it's a very different environment. The risk of envenomation does differ. Here in Cairns and our region, we have a greater variety of venomous snakes. And obviously in Southern Australia, we don't get the venomous jellyfish and some of the other venomous creatures such as cone shells and stonefish that we get up in the tropics. So here in Cairns, the most common thing we see is uh, marine envenoming, especially jellyfish. But we also see a significant number of uh, snake bites and snake envenomings every year. I work in a metropolitan area. We don't see many snake bites in our hospital. My exposure to snake bites is with my role in retrieval services in Queensland. The effect of snake venom on the human bodies is an indirect effect of what the venom's there for, which is food and digestion. It can cause neurotoxicity, so paralysis in humans. It can affect the coagulation, the blood clotting, to make the blood less sticky. And there's other components, what we call rhabdomyolysis, breakdown of muscle. So if you are bitten, do apply first aid, call for help and get yourself to a healthcare facility by ambulance if you can. I'm Dr. Julian White. I'm a clinical toxinologist at the Women's and Children's Hospital in Adelaide. I have been working as a clinical toxinologist for more than 40 years. When a patient presents with significant snake bite or spider bite, we need to give antivenom as soon as it is clear that the patient has been significantly envenomed. Giving them antivenom helps to neutralise circulating venom and that reduces the effects of venom and improves their chance of survival. Antivenom is considered one of the essential emergency drugs for the health system in Australia. In the early 1920s, the risk of death from snake bites was high, with the fatality rate reaching as high as 40%. The challenge to create Australia's first anti-venom was met by Dr. Neil Hamilton Fairley in collaboration with the Commonwealth Serum Laboratories. The first anti-venom in Australia came about as a part of a collaboration between Walter and Eliza Hall Institute and CSL. In 1931, when the very first antivenom was used as treatment, the Sun reported at the time, praising the efforts of the men, commenting they were men who played with death so that others may live. So this is the very first vial of Taipan antivenom that was produced by CSL in 1955. And it was actually delivered to a 10 year old boy who had been bitten in the schoolyard uh, by Taipan, the most venomous snake in the world. After he received this vial of antivenom, it changed the trajectory of his life. He was inspired to become a doctor and an anaesthetist. Securus, a CSL company, now continues the work started by the Commonwealth Serum Laboratories. Since the first tiger snake antivenom produced in the 1930s, 
antivenoms for other venomous snakes, spiders, and marine creatures were subsequently introduced. To produce the antivenom that helps to treat the bites and stings from these creatures, Securus maintains close relationships with a variety of venom suppliers. These suppliers are experts in handling venomous creatures and in the extraction of venom. The Australian Reptile Park helps educate groups on the different species of spiders and snakes that can be found in Australia. Here at the Australian Reptile Park, we extract venom from the five main groups of Australian toxic snakes, which is your tiger snake, your king brown snake, your eastern brown snake, your coastal taipans, and your death adders. After we have extracted the raw venom from these highly venomous snakes, we send that raw venom to Securus, and they will turn the raw product that we extract into the anti-venom product that you would receive in hospital. When you are working with highly venomous snakes like we do every single day, of course there are risks. Some of these snakes are potentially quite dangerous. All the staff that work here at the park have been working with snakes their whole lives. They're highly trained. We have a very good relationship with the individual snakes that we have here at the Reptile Park. In this facility, we milk the male Sydney funnelweb, Atrax robustus. The Australian Reptile Park is the only facility in the world to provide the raw venom to Securus in Melbourne for the production of anti-venom for funnelweb spiders. Securus is involved with the Australian Reptile Park in developing the Funnelweb Spider Breeding Program to increase the amount of venom available for anti-venom production. The Australian Reptile Park has been milking funnelweb spiders for 30 years. The breeding program allows for a long-term sustainable program with high volumes of funnelweb spider venom for the production of anti-venom. Other suppliers focus primarily on providing venom for the purpose of making anti-venom. Venom Supplies in Tanunda, South Australia, maintains the largest collection of venomous snakes in Australia. They also provide redback spider venom for anti-venom production. <laughs> Professor Jamie Seymour at James Cook University has been researching and working with venomous creatures for over 20 years. He collects stonefish and box jellyfish in their natural habitat and extracts venom in order to supply it to Securus for the production of anti-venom. Within the facilities at James Cook University, we collect venom from stonefish, from box jellyfish, from cone snails, and occasionally a blue-ringed octopus. So the venom we collect goes to a variety of areas. It stays within our group so we can do work on it. We send it to overseas scientists that we collaborate with, and we also send it down to places like Securus where they use it for the production of anti-venom. Although we have a huge number of venomous animals, the number of stings we get is also quite high, but we have some of the best medical facilities in the world for treating this. So people think of it as a very dangerous place, but in the grand scheme of things, the risk to the average person is quite low. Once the venom has been extracted, the correct antibodies need to be produced in the blood of a donor animal before it can be purified for human use. Animals that help to facilitate this process include horses, sheep and rabbits. On the Securus farm, we provide veterinary service to maintain the health and well-being of donor horses. Without the animals, the plasma that's required to produce the antivenom can't be made. Here we have Jaguar. He's donating plasma this morning. Now I'm familiar with these, I donate plasma myself, so I know what the process is like. This is a spinning membrane which separates the red blood cells from the plasma, putting the red blood cells back to the horse and the plasma goes into these collection bags down here, which is rich in antibodies for anti-venom production. After removing the plasma containing the anti-venom antibodies from the blood, the plasma is sent back to Securus, where the manufacturing takes place. So we receive the plasma here into the manufacturing facility. That's the starting material to make our antivenom products. The plasma is inactivated, we use chemicals, we use heat, and we isolate the antibodies from the plasma. They're the key component of the antivenom product. It's critical to ensure that we maintain ongoing supply of antivenoms. Securus has a very strong partnership with the Australian Government who support us to manufacture antivenoms for the Australian population. With the support of the Australian Government, Securus provides antivenom for people all over Australia 
and has expanded to help in neighbouring countries like Papua New Guinea. The World Health Organization has listed snakebite envenoming as one of the world's neglected tropical diseases. Securus continues to share their expertise in anti-venom manufacturing and animal husbandry through education and support of developing nations. Working with Securus is inspiring because of their dedication to public health. Knowing that someone might potentially go home back to their families after a snake bite is something we're really proud to be a part of. There's not many people in the world can say they've been involved in something like that and, and that's, that's seriously cool. Australians have always had a desire to explore this vast country of ours. With that comes a duty to respect and understand the local wildlife and ecosystem. Because the health of our home is everyone's responsibility. Securus is proud to partner with the Australian government and local venom suppliers to ensure these potentially life-saving treatments are available for all Australians, no matter how far or how wide they roam.